Welcome back to Sleepless Run and Plays. Today we're going to be continuing our Bezier game series, playing the game of Suburbia. We'll first begin by looking at how to set the game and covering the basic rules. Then the second half of the video will be me playing the solo version of the game. There are actually two solo versions, I'll just be playing one of them though. The first thing you do when you're setting up a game of Suburbia is you get your stacks of tiles. You want to create the stacks according to the numbers shown in the A, B, and C sections of the board. You adjust the number of players. It's, the, it's actually written on the board, so it's really easy to remember. There's not a lot of difficulty there. Then you'll shuffle the stacks together, which I've already done, and you'll place them on there. So A and B are really easy to do. A is done. B is done. C is different. In C, you take nine tiles and shuffle them together, which I have done. Then you'll take another six tiles, shuffle them together, and take the take the one more round token, and you'll shuffle it into those six C's. So you have no idea where it's going to go. Then you take those six C's, and you place them underneath the prior nine C's you'd already done. Then you take another four C tiles, and place them on the very bottom of the stack. So the C stack is going to be the, the largest stack in the game. Then you will find the four basic tiles of uh, real estate tiles. The ones that have my, uh, colored backs instead of the C or the uh, lake backs. And you'll put four of them in each of their spots on the real estate market board. You'll take the supply board, which I've already done, and you'll load it up with a bunch of coins. That's like only half the coins I have since I have all the expansions for this game. So I just have a big pile right there. I only am using the base game for today's demo and explanation. I removed all the uh, tiles from the other expansions and set them aside. Because I don't want to add them in right now. Then the next step is you take the top seven tiles of A and you lay them out. This works even in a solo game. If you're playing the basic solo game. If you're playing against Dale the Bot, which is a fun way of playing, but I'm not going to be playing that one since it's twice as long, you would only be using four spaces. You'd also set up your tiles completely differently. So you have so those tiles are placed out. Then each player takes one of their it takes their color burrow board and lays it out. You can choose to play with it or the burrow goes towards you or away from you. You can flip the burrow boards over, and then you'll set your income you'll set your cylinder. In your cube, your income and your reputation at the indicated spots. You will then take the three tiles. They're the exact same tiles up there, but each player ha has these three. And you'll place the suburbs, community park, and heavy factory in that order from the middle gap in your borough board. Each player will take 15 coins at the beginning. And there are three investment markers. In a, mul in a multiplayer game, each player will take two gold tiles. Not these ones right here, but two other gold tiles. And they'd look at them and pick one. Oh, I did skip a step. My bad. Before you'd actually get your own borough board, you would actually look at the goals. You'd set a number of goals equal to the number of players. Unless there's player slots. Two players, three, and four. And you'd lay them out, and you'd reveal them all. Goals are worth population at the end of the game, and population wins you the game. If you're ever curious about any of these tokens, one of the big benefits of this game is the fact that in the instruction manual... There's a sheet that explains every single one of the tiles and the goals. And you get one of these per expansion set also. Remember that when you award goals in the end of the game, tied goals are not scored. Okay, so once you have your personal borough, your money, your investment markers, you have your three uh, districts already placed, then you need to take your population tracker, this is a victory score thing, and you'll need to place that out onto the mark area marked. Now the fun thing is that your starting conditions, zero income, one reputation, and two population, are completely represented by the three starting tiles. When you play a suburbs tile out, you get two population. You're two population. When you play a community park out, you lose one income. So you go down minus one income to minus one. And then you get plus one reputation for each adjacent industrial, residential, or commercial zone. So we then go up one reputation for being next to the suburbs. Then we play 
the heavy factory. The heavy factory has a plus one income, so your income can go from minus one back to zero, and then it's a minus one for each adjacent uh, civic or residence area. This one's got a plus one for an industrial, so it gets plus one, and then this one goes minus one, so there's no change there. So we end up with one reputation from this tile and zero income from these two tiles together and two population from the suburbs. So that's how we start off. Before we go any further, let's explain some of the tile wording. Tiles will have different words on them. Let's look at the business supply store. The business supply store is an interesting tile. It has a plus, it costs eight money. That's on the uh, left hand side. It has a plus one to your income value when you play it. And it also has in the bottom area, the conditional set. You get plus one income for every office tile played. Now this doesn't actually have the office symbol, but any tile that has, it'll be on the right side over here. A briefcase symbol is an office. This says for every office tile. That means that anyone who plays an office tile triggers this. So it's kind of really cool. Then we have things like the elementary school. It costs $5 to play. It's a civic tile. Up in the upper corner, it has plus one reputation. Then it has the symbol for a school. That's the pencil. And then it says plus one population for each of your residential zones. That means that whenever this is played and in whenever any future residential zones are played, you always get plus one population. That's how this tile works. Then we have the adjacency tiles. Right here is the freeway. The freeway is an industrial tile and it costs a base of $5. It has a minus one reputation for each adjacent residential, but a plus one uh, income for each adjacent commercial. This occurs again whenever this tile is played, or whenever a tile is played adjacent to it. So that's how tiles work. The important thing is that every time a tile is played in any borough, you need to be checking these things. It's actually one of the things that makes Suburbia a slightly more difficult game, is that you have to be constantly paying attention. If you're not constantly paying attention, to what people are playing, to what you're playing, you can miss stuff. I kind of wish, and this, they may have fixed this in the, um, there's, there's been a recent re-release of the game that's got like new artwork and stuff like that, and there was a Kickstarter for a collector's edition a little while ago, I do believe. I really wonder if they maybe fixed it, because I honestly think the artwork should have shown something more apparent that showed, hey, this is a adjacency tile, hey, this is a whenever I do something tile, or this is a whenever anyone does something tile, just so that you could visually glance down at the board and go, oh yeah, he played an office, I need to check that tile. Oh, boom, I do, I can check that and I get plus one income. Really important to know, it's actually probably the most complex part of the game is constantly checking everything over, which they do give you a on, a, on each of the player cards, it tells you what to do when placing a tile. Pay the cost of the tile shown in the left corner, down here with one, Adjust according to the immediate effect in the upper right of the tile. Adjust according to the conditional effect in the bottom of the tile. Adjust according to the conditional effect of any adjacent tiles. Adjust according to the conditional effect of any non-adjacent tiles. Check with other players to see if any of their tiles will cause you to make adjustments. And then check with other players to see if their burrows are impacted by the tile you played. Like I said, it's a little bit complex when you think about that. So why playing the solo game is a real streamlined way of playing this. Because you will not end up with a lot of Check, 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 check. You'll just check your own stuff. That makes it a lot easier. So let's, how to, let's actually look at how to play a turn of the game. On your turn, again, we'll use that, that card we're looking at. It shows us, on your turn, you do four things in order. Take and place one tile or place one investment marker in your burrow. That's easy enough. Collect or pay money based on your income. Yeah, your income can go negative and you can be paying money during your turn. Adjust population based on your reputation. Then add a new tile to the market, to the real estate market. Okay, that's the easy overview. Let's look at what each of those things mean. On my turn, I'm gonna buy a tile from the residential market. So I go up here and I look at the tiles. There are currently seven tiles laid out. The first two spaces cost an additional zero dollars. So I can buy a convenience store or municipal airport in this layout for only the $6 printed on them. If I was to buy anything else, let's say I really want to buy that landfill. It costs the value there plus $10. So these last tiles are pretty expensive to buy right off the bat. But the benefit is every time you buy a tile, 
all the tiles slide downwards. So if I was to buy this municipal airport right here, these three tiles would slide over, and the new one goes in there. Easy. Then I would gain income. So I've paid my money for my 15 into the stack, and let's say I buy this convenience store. And then I play the convenience store down. Just place it in. Keep all the tile headings facing one way just because it makes it a lot easier to read. There's no there's no turning directionality in this game. So you have to worry about that. But if everything's going the same way, it'd be a lot easier to read. So then I play the tile down. What do I do? I pay the cost in the corner. I pay six bucks. Then I adjust according to the median effect in the upper right corner. I have a plus one. I increase my income track by one. Then there's no other condition on this card. I then check adjacent cards. Well, that one doesn't have anything, but this one says plus one re uh, reputation for each of those tiles. Well, my reputation goes up another one. Yay! Then I adjust according to the... There's no other tiles near, so I can just kind of skip through the rest of this. Boom, I'm all done. Then I collect income, so I get one dollar back, because I'm getting plus one, and then I move my score tracker up two spots, because that's where my reputation is. Then I would scoot all these tiles down, and I add a new tile to the market. That's my turn. It's not that difficult. But things can start snowballing on you. Every time, if you look at the score tracker now, every time you cross one of these thick red lines, you reduce your income and your reputation by one. That means that the more your population is growing, the more crowded your town is, the less people actually want to move there, essentially. And the more expensive it is to maintain your town. So you need to constantly have more income and... So it's really important to balance your population growth with your income. Now, if for some reason, so let's say, an example, that somehow my income got down to minus five and I had like no money. Like I'd spent all my money, my income is at minus five and it's time to pay up. Well, I can't pay, I don't have any money. Well, you still do pay. You lose population. You lose victory points for every money you can't cover. So, if I was right there, and I had to pay, and I was at four points, and I had to pay five, I drop back to zero. I literally have no victory points. I can't drop below zero, thankfully, but I'm screwed. That's really a rough thing to do. Now, again, as I said, though, if you cross a red line, you reduce by one and in, and uh, on both of them. If something causes, let's say I have a negative reputation, a minus two reputation, and I go backwards, I would then increase both of these by one. So if you go f f ahead of a red line, if you cross a red line going forward, you reduce. If for some reason you go backwards, you unreduce. That is the pretty much the basic how to play the game. Whoever has the most population wins the game. So now let's take a look at the solo rules. The solo rules play a little bit differently. There are two versions and we're just gonna play the lone architect today. In the setup, you use the two player tile stacks but I don't have any goals. So the goal tokens are all just going to disappear. Then you play it as per normal on your turn. However, moving past a red line in the solo lone architect mode results in a minus two income, minus two reputation. So it's really rough to move past those red lines. In addition to that, once you've taken your tile and you've played it out and you've checked everything in your turn, you have to discard a second tile. So every turn you're going to go through two tiles. That's pretty much it. Those are the big differences. There, of course, is Dale the Bot version of the solo playthrough. And Dale the Bot, you essentially play against a, a kind of straightforward AI. It's fun, but the game is a bit longer. So I'm just going to play the solo architect mode. I'm going to shuffle up all these A tiles I laid out, for example. And then I'm going to get to playing. I now have everything set up for the solo mode of the game. I'm going to distribute my seven tiles out. Okay. First thing I'm going to buy, because it looks nice and cheap out there, is that municipal airport. I've got a good place to place it off the heavy factory, so I'm just going to spend my six money and get the municipal airport. I place it there, and then I'm going to do my adjustments. Well, there's no instantaneous adjustment. I check the bottom. Plus one income for every airport. Hey, it's an airport. I get one income. Minus one reputation for each adjacent housing or residential. 
There's none of those. So at the moment, that's where I'm standing. I now collect my income, which is one money. Then I adjust my reputation, which is still at one. So I go up one population. Then I now need to discard a tile. I'm going to discard this fancy... No. I'm going to discard this fancy restaurant. And then I adjust everything downward. Then two new tiles come off the A stack. Okay. So now it's my next turn. This is going to go really fast. I won't do a lot of talking all the time. I'll just cover some things. But you'll see how it plays out. I'm going to spend six again. I'm going to buy that convenience store because it's nice and simple and convenient. I'm going to place it right there. So I get an immediate plus one from it for income. Then I check the adjacent tiles. This one's plus one reputation for each of those. So it goes up. This does not affect is not affected by commercial, so it doesn't go down. So I'm there. Then I get my income. A whopping two monies. And I increase my score by two reputate by two points of reputation. Then I have to discard a card from the tiles. Well, I'm gonna get rid of the farm this time. The first farm. And everything scooches down. I've only got six monies at the moment, so my purchases are more difficult now. I am going to take the fast food restaurant, which is actually pretty darn good, but I don't have it, can't afford it right now. And I'm just going to take it as a lake. I'm going to place the lake down here. And now I get two money for each adjacent non-lake, which is six monies. Because I took it from the zero area, I didn't have to pay any money for it, which means it was nice and free, which is what I really was wanting. I'm going to toss the other, I'm going to toss the slaughterhouse. And then I move everything down. Oh, I skipped a step. I skipped two steps, actually. First, I should have taken my two income and adjusted my population. Up two more. Okay, now everything's right. Okay, now my next turn. I could buy the waterfront waterfront realty, place it out in such a way that we get a whole bunch of money, which could be really useful for the future. I could also get that fancy restaurant, which would really be pretty good for the future. But I'd be careful because all future restaurants are minus one income after that, so it's a difficult one. I think I'm gonna go with that fancy restaurant though. So I want that right now. So I'm gonna spend my nine money. Take the fancy restaurant. I'm going to put that fancy restaurant alongside the lake. So it gives me three income spaces, moving from two to five. Then I get plus two money back from placing it next to the lake. Then I am done checking my tile stuff because there's no other restaurants yet. So then I will get my income, which is five. I will adjust my population up by two more for the reputation. And then I will discard another card out here. I'm going to get rid of the convenience store. It's nice, but it's just not yay. So once again, I get that waterfront realty, which really kind of help. I can put it such a way. Or I can get that farm which is not bad. I mean, the farm could trigger for more restaurants. I could buy that other airport. I'd really wait for that, though. So I'm actually going to do, since I like some of the stuff out there, I'm going to actually just buy that waterfront realty to get a lot of money all at once. I'll place the waterfront realty down there, because why not? I'm not triggering on this right now, because I'm actually trying to go kind of slow on my population game at the moment so that I can build up a better money source the moment of stuff. So I place this down, and I get, I'm going to check right here, I'm going to get $2 for that. Then, Lakes give you an extra $2 for each adjacent thing. So I'm going to get 10 more monies. Money, hello. Then, I go to my income, and I get more money, and then I move my population up two points from my reputation track. 
Then I have to discard a card from out here. I'm going to get rid of that fast food restaurant. I didn't really care about it that much, so I'm going to get rid of it. May mean the farm is going to be one of the things I'm going to knock off pretty soon, too. Just may not be doing restaurants. So I place my first two tiles from B. Those are interesting. So now, it's back to the top of my turn again. Well, I like that municipal airport because that municipal airport is going to start triggering for a lot more things. So I'm going to buy a municipal airport for six. I'm going to bring that down and place it against the lake also. So now, I get plus one for each airport on both airports. So this one's worth two, three more income. Up to eight income. I have no adjacent residential, so I'm worried about that. Then, I go up here, and I have plus $2 for each adjacent industrial, doubled up, so I get four money back. So I'm just going to toss a one to get another five. Then I go, and I get paid, and I get paid eight. Toss these two, get another five. See, look at this. I'm getting really good income right now, because I'm playing it slow. I increase my reputation track, then I have to discard another tile. The housing project is interesting, it's really cheap for victory points, but that minus two reputation is relatively rough. And I just don't think I'm ready for housing projects. Well, the Berg von Allsbach is pretty good. Well, let's see what we have out here. I could buy a farm. Isn't terrible. I could buy that office building, though. The office building could be a heavy investment right now. And really pay off in the long run. Because it'd be it'd be at least a plus three or plus four or plus three income right now, which would be pretty sweet. And I've got a bit of money to spare. That farm wouldn't be bad, but the farm is just do I even care? The office building would cost me only four more than the farm. I'm gonna go with the office building. Place the office building over there. I get plus one income. I get plus two more income. So that's nice. Then I get my 11 monies. Which is almost everything I paid for the thing. I'm going to get rid of that farm. I just don't care about the farm. I, I bypassed the chance to get a bunch of restaurants and play it out like that. Then I need to move my reputation up. And this will be the big problem. I'm now going to cross that 15. I now lose this. And I lose that. Ow. I'm going to be stagnant for a little while. That'll be fine. Hey, there's a really sweet airport down there in a little while. So I'm going to buy that gas station because that gas station is going to need more income. I'm going to place it in a place that hopefully I'll be able to eventually get some residential near. I'm going to take the gas station. I'm going to place it there. It's going to cost me seven monies. Uh, nine monies. I'm going to place it there. The gas station gives me Plus one income right now. And then plus one for each adjacent commercial building. So another income. So. Now I'm going to get 11 income at the end of the turn. I move my reputation nowhere at all because I'm at zero now. And then all of these move up. Oh wait. I discard one and then they all move up. I'm discarding that landfill. That landfill is not... Ugh. Let's go with that Berg von Allspex. Because that seems like a pretty good one right now. It's going to cost me 12. I'm going to place it up here. For now. And I'm going to get 3 population immediately. Then I get plus 1 reputation for each adjacent residential. I don't have any of those. But I get plus one population for each adjacent residential, so I get another population. So there we go. Then I get paid 11 money again. I'm really not a big fan of the tens in general. I like the fives and the ones for the money coins. And I'm going to just I don't like casinos. Ooh, postal service is nice. Okay, I'm going to spend four monies. So I'm going to buy this mobile home community. This is really cheap. I'm going to place it right here. Okay. First off, it gives me six population. I'll do that immediately. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ow. Then, 
I get plus reputation for each adjacent uh, residential, and I get plus one for each adjacent residential, so I'm back to zero again. Woof! Okay. Oh, I forgot to pay myself my nine monies. I'm going to buy that domestic airport. Okay. Now I got a lot of look on the airports. I get plus one income for the domestic airport going out, plain and simple. Then I get plus one reputation for every airport. That's three airports now. Then I get minus one for each adjacent residential. None. Then I go back up and this gives me another... I get two more income because of the other airports. So... Yay! Okay, I get 12 income now. And I get 3 population. It's going to cross another line pretty soon. Then, I'm going to toss the Bureau of the Office of Bureaucracy. That domestic airport is good. Those dom airports are amazing, in my opinion. They go to the hostel. Because it's free! And I can place it up here. I will gain two population, which reduces everything down again. Then I get minus one for each adjacent commercial none, plus one for each adjacent residential, so I gain one more there. And that's where everything stands. So I gain ten monies and two population. Toss another card. I'm going to get rid of the other hostel now. I don't need the second one of those. The last B tile comes out, it's a retirement village, and the first C tile, chip fabrication plant. Okay, and that power station. Actually, no. Uh, four versus five, the postal service being one dollar more is still a better deal. And I can take full advantage of it too. So I pay 12 for the postal service. And I put the postal service there. Then I will gain one income for each of my commercials. One, two, three, four, five. Ten to fifteen. Yay! And I get paid fifteen. My population goes up two more. And I have to toss something. I'm going to toss the movie theater for now. Okay, that high school is really good. Okay, stadium, you are what I want now more than anything else. Sixteen for that stadium. I place the stadium there. So it gives me an immediate income of one. And I can't take advantage of that because you can't go above 15. So I'm stuck. I don't get that bonus. Then I get plus two reputation for each adjacent uh, residential. So I go up to six. Not bad. Then I get paid. So you get paid 15 monies. One, two, three. And I go up six, res six population. So I cross the red line. So drop, drop. And then you're that power station. I want that domestic airport. Cost me 11. It's a humongous airport complex down there. So it gives me plus one income. Then it gives me plus one reputation for airport. That's four reputation. Then I get plus another reputation for that air for that one. Then I get two more income, but I can't do that. I get maxed right there. So there we go. My airport's rock. So I get paid. 15 monies again. I'm going to take two of these and I need some ones now. And then I go up nine population. One, two, oh, wait, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just crossed two red lines. Zoom. Zoom. Wow, that was rough, huh? Two red lines crossed. I don't need the new car dealership. I'm going to buy that retirement village. I have an idea. Cost me eight only. I place it there. I get five people immediately. One, two, three, four, five. Drops everything by two again. Then I get plus two for each adjacent, uh, plus two for being adjacent, and plus one uh, population for it being adjacent. So there we go. And then I get paid. I get paid nine money. 
And I go five more population. One, two, three. That drops me down by two again on both categories. And I'm going to get rid of the hotel because the hotel is useless for me. So this point in time is where I need to start working on trying to get more reputation so I can keep going up in score because we're getting into the C stack pretty deeply. And income, I just need to balance and keep my income where I'm getting some money. I've got a pretty good stack, but I've got to keep my income balanced. But I need I need the reputation more. The high school could be really good right now. Chip fabrication plant, though, could give me a quick bump in income to handle on, and it still gives me some reputation. Yeah, I'm going to get that chip fabrication plant. Yeah, it gives me plus two reputation immediately to five. Plus one income for each of my commercials. I have five of those, so back up to 12 for my income. Then I get plus another reputation for being adjacent to the community park. Then I get 12 money. And I go up six population. Drops me down by two on both categories again. Like I said, I gotta be balancing these. I have to toss something. I need to toss a high school because I don't think I can get don't really want to deal with two high schools. Okay, the international airport is now where I want it to be. And the international airport is amazing, so we're definitely gonna buy the international airport. Boom, International Airport. Just stick it right there in the middle of the airport squads. Okay, so it does nothing base, but it gives plus one, plus one for every airport. That's plus five, plus five. Then I have one, two domestic airports, so I'm going to have two more reputation increase. And unfortunately, I have two municipal airports. I can't get the extra income increase because I'm already maxed. So I'll get 15 monies, and I'll gain 11 population. So you're going to jump me from 66 to 77. That's going to cross two red markers and put me right next to another one. So I'm going to drop down by four on each of these. Like I said, my balance is I'm trying to score while still keeping an income going. And you got to really watch this very carefully. I'm going to toss the resort. Wow, I'm just getting civic offices now like crazy. Okay, well... Let's just go for a really big score and see what it does to me. Let's buy that middle school first, because it's less money. I'm going to spend 10 for the middle school. Does it matter where this goes? I'll just place it there. It gives me plus one reputation. Then plus two population for each of my residential areas. One, two, three, four, five. So 10 population from 77 to 87 crosses one, two, three. Three red lines. Ouch. That was actually a pain, bit painful. I only get five income this turn. Now I go up two more population, which costs me another red line. Whew. Major slowdown. But that's where we're coming. We're getting really close to the end of the game. So it's actually okay. I'm going to toss this high school. I just don't see myself getting a high school at this point in time. Wow. I must be way down there. Must be at the very bottom of that stack of shuffles fine with me. I'm going to buy that local EPA office so I get some money. It's 12. Give me one reputation. And it gives me $2 for every industrial. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 14 monies. Then I get increased by 1 for it's because it's an office. So I increase my income by 1. Which is, seriously, the only other office I've bought in this whole game. Okay, toss the next thing. I'm going to toss, I'm going to toss that. I just don't care about new car dealerships. I really don't. Okay. This is the last round I get to play. Whatever I buy now is the final thing that goes out. So I want to spend as much as possible and get the biggest score bonus. Oh, I forgot to increase my score last turn. I got one, I got four monies that came in. I really don't need. I mean, the money's fine. The middle school is not bad, but I think the apartments are going to be... The apartments will give me a 9, plus some other bonuses out there as well. The middle school would give me 10. Apartments or middle school? Middle school will trigger off of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There he is out there for 10. 
plus the reputation bonus, which I'll lose almost immediately, which I'll lose immediately. The apartments will give me five, nine, ten, eleven. I think the apartments are better by one. Yep, apartments. That cost me twelve. Paying into the bank. Then I do all the triggers, I get five population. One, two, three, four. That reduces me by there. Then I get plus two more for each adjacent commercial. Then I get plus two more. I think that that is it. Then I have to pay money. I lose five money, or I lose four money. I lose five population. And then I spend money to gain population. For every five, I spend, I get a population. And then no goals. So that's the end of the game. There we go. Let's check the uh, score compared to the thing. There's a little chart in these games that tells you how well you did. Okay. Scoring solo. One, 91 to 105 is architectural designer. Which is like mid-range for the victories in this. If you can cross 135, you're the CEO. So, mid-range. Not bad. I probably could have played a bit better in some ways. I mean, I never even thought about using my times 2 marker. And I probably should have played that on an international airport at some point in time. Or whatever. But, whatever. But yeah, you lose that minus 2, minus 2 per uh, red bar in solo. In this version of solo, it's really rough. You've got to really be careful. Well... I hope you've enjoyed this video of how to play Suburbia and the solo and a demonstration solo game. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. This is Slipless Run saying, Sayonara.